Good morning everyone and welcome to your HR Advice Online webinar regarding the different types of leave and the business rights when it comes to employees accessing leave. My name is Charlotte and I'll be hosting today's webinar. Today's session will run for approximately one hour with time for questions throughout. Questions can be submitted at any time in the question box on the webinar's control panel. Our presenter today is Claire Beard, a HR advisor at HR Advice Online. With over 20 years experience working in human resources across a broad range of industries, including manufacturing, engineering, not-for-profit, and financial services, Claire brings a wide range of experience to the HR Advice Online clients. It is now my pleasure to hand you over to Claire for today's session. Thank you, Charlotte, and welcome, everyone. So today's webinar is on leave. Um, now, it's important to probably state that the webinar is for general advice only. Given the number of people on the call and the complexity of some of the issues we'll be covering, we won't be able to go into specific issues, but we are happy to receive email questions which we can respond to at a later stage if need be. Okay. Today's session will take um, approximately 30 to 40 minutes for the presentation uh, side of it, but as Charlotte mentioned, I'm very happy to take questions throughout and we'll refer to any questions that have come through. Also, of course, happy to take further questions at the end. However, if they are complex and quite individualised questions, I will mention that and we'll ensure that we capture those in email form at a later stage offline. Okay. So the first slide, this is just uh, d highlighting our directors of HR Advice Online, both Kerry and Cheryl, uh, and both individuals uh, have their names directly underneath. Our agenda today, we're covering uh, all the types of leave that uh, as employers you're facing. Okay, So navigating the leave entitlement landscape can be challenging for employers. Our team receive a lot of queries related to the various types of leave. To assist, I've provided a simplified overview of which employees are entitled to what leave, when the leave can be taken, and some common questions we receive at HR Advice Online. The information in this webinar is based on standard entitlements, but it is always important to check your applicable awards, enterprise agreements, or contracts in case they're they provide for greater entitlements. So our agenda today is covering annual leave, personal carers leave, compassionate leave, community service leave, parental leave, long service leave, and leave without pay or leave without payments. Okay, so the first topic is annual leave. So who and how much is the question? Uh, all employees, other than casual employees, are entitled to four weeks of annual leave per year or five weeks per year if they are a shift worker. Now, a shift worker's definition is in your applicable modern award or the Fair Work Act. So it's always important to refer to that um, to determine whether they are entitled to a greater number of leave. When can they take it? Annual leave must be taken at a time agreed by both the employer and the employee. An employee must, sorry, an employer must not unreasonably refuse a request for annual leave. So what we actually recommend is that you have a process or a system in place where you have documentation to capture requests for leave to be taken, but also it's important to capture when and why you refuse someone taking leave. Now, an employer can request, um, sorry, a request for leave can be refused by an employer when operationally it will be a detriment to the business. Okay, so an example of that might include two people performing the same role within the business. Both have applied for leave at around the same time. You would look to operationally, it doesn't make sense to have both of their roles vacant for that period of time. Therefore, you need to have a bit of a discussion with the second individual who has applied for leave if the first individual's leave entitlement has been, application has been approved. 
You would want to have a particular discussion as to why operationally you can't accept their application at that time. However, we always recommend during that discussion you give them other options for dates that might be more relevant for the business for them to take. Um, but it's always important to have that process in place. It's not just a straight refusal and there always needs to be an operational reason for a refusal to occur, otherwise it may be deemed unreasonable. Okay. The next question is, can it be paid out? Now, cashing out of annual leave can occur if it's provided for in the relevant award or agreement. An employee may elect to have the balance of annual leave that is greater than 20 days paid to them instead of taking the time off. Now what that actually means, as stated before, all employees other than casuals entitled to four weeks of annual leave per year or 20 days. Now if an employee accrues enough annual leave that they have in excess of that 20 days balance, for example they have 25 days. If there is a cashing out clause in the appropriate agreement or relevant award, uh, you can make an agreement that the employee can request to take that five days additional in the lump sum payment, okay, but they must have a balance of 20 days remaining after a cashing out occurs. Now does it accrue and is it payable on termination? Now an employee's entitlement to annual leave does accrue progressively throughout the year and it also accumulates from year to year. Annual leave doesn't accrue whilst an employee is on unpaid annual leave, unpaid personal sick leave or unpaid parental leave, but we'll get into more of that later. Any accrued leave which has not been taken must be paid to the employee on termination, regardless of whether the termination was initiated by the employer or the employee. That is an accrued entitlement and it must be paid out on termination. And the final topic, how much does an employer pay? Now the, employer must, the employee must be paid at least their base rate of pay for their ordinary hours during a period of annual leave unless their applicable award or enterprise agreement or contract of employment provides for a greater entitlement. Now a greater entitlement might even include leave, something like leave loading or other allowances that are payable upon, term, upon annual leave being taken. So again it's important to have an understanding of where to look in the relevant award agreement or contract of employment. Okay, it's quite a complex uh, topic Charlotte, so I'm just going to defer to if there's any questions on that one. No questions have been submitted yet. No questions as yet? No. no problem, we'll move on. So the next topic is the personal carer's leave. Now personal and carer's leave is otherwise known as sick leave in old term terminology. So an employ all employees other than casual employees are entitled to 10 days of paid personal carer's leave which is prorated for part-time employees per year of service with their employer, okay. An employee is entitled to take personal carer's leave when they are not fit for work due to a personal illness or injury or whether they need to provide care or support to a member of their immediate family or household. Now that could be a child, sister or parent. Now evidence requirements, should an employer question the validity of an absence for personal carer's leave, they may request the employee provide reasonable evidence by way of medical certificate or stat deck, okay. Now personal carer's leave cannot be paid out. Does it accrue and is it paid out on termination? An employee's entitlement to personal carer's leave accrues progressively throughout the year according to their ordinary hours of work. The employees are not entitled, entitled generally to have accrued personal leave paid out on termination unless they have an entitlement from their contract of employment or their specific award. The leave itself actually accrues year on year. And how much does the employer pay? 
An employee must be paid at least their based rate of pay for their ordinary hours of work whilst on personal or carer's leave, unless their award or enterprise agreement or contract provides a greater entitlement. Okay. The next type of leave we look at is compassionate leave. So who and how much? All employees, including casual employees, are entitled to compassionate leave. However, only permanent employees, so that's full and part-time, are entitled to be paid for this leave. Casual employees are entitled to unpaid compassionate leave and the entitlement for all employees is two days per occasion. An employee is entitled to take compassionate leave when a family member of their immediate family or household suffers an illness or injury that threatens their life or dies. Now, it's important to understand that because it's commonly understood that compassionate leave is only used when a family member dies. But compassionate leave can actually be utilised if an immediate family member um, has an injury or illness that threatens their life. Now, compassionate leave cannot be paid out. It's an occasion-based leave, so employees are not actually entitled to have any compassionate leave paid out on termination. Permanent employees must be paid at least their base rate of pay for the ordinary hours they would have worked had they not been on compassionate leave. Okay, Charlotte, any questions after those two topics? Yeah, there have been a few questions to come through. The first one... Sure. Being, I had an employee to resign and he's given four weeks notice, but he needs mm -hmm. to go on a few interviews so can't work fully through the notice period. Is the company, does the company must pay out his unused annual leave or might be a reason to hold off his pay or unused annual leave? I'm not sure if that makes complete sense. No. So my understanding of that question is an employee wants to, has given their four weeks notice of leave, wants to take some time off to attend interviews um, and the potentially the employer is asking can they withhold from the annual leave for that time taken off. I hope I'm understanding that question accurately. Yeah. Now, during any notice period an employee is still in, uh, an employee until their end date with the employer. So any time that they want to have as an absence still needs to be applied for and it needs to be appropriate. So as you can imagine, if someone needs to take time off and it's not because they're ill or they need to care for a family member, they can apply for annual leave. But again, it's up to the employer whether they will honour that application. So you could have a policy in place or a, an agreement where you request that employees uh, give a certain period of notice for annual leave to be requested and things like that. However, refusing annual leave still has to be on the basis of an operational need. So you'd need to make it clear during any employee's notice period uh, that should they wish to have an absence during that time, they still need to go through the appropriate approval process. Uh, however, if they go absent, um, generally the only time you can withhold payments and entitlements of annual leave is when they don't provide the required notice period given. Okay, and that's they leave before their notice period is actually up. Okay, but that can become quite a complex area and due process does need to be followed and that's something we assist our clients with on a regular basis, so we'd be happy to assist with. So I hope that answers that question. Sure, thanks for that. Um, what happens if an employee is sick and has no sick leave left? Okay, if an employee is ill, uh, they can actually uh, not be paid. They can still have unpaid sick leave. So once they've exhausted their options, if they provide, and generally when someone has exhausted their sick leave entitlements and they go absent again, an employer starts to have a requirement for evidence-based absence. So you would require a medical certificate and so forth. Um, they can still uh, have that down as unpaid sick leave, but as it states, they're not actually paid for that absence. Does compassionate leave reduce the personal slash carer's leave entitlement? No, it doesn't. So compassionate leave is almost in an addition uh, to the personal carer's leave. So it's uh, compassionate leave is just two days per occasion and it's paid as long as the criteria is met as far 
as far as it being an, emerg uh, an immediate family member or as the company sees fit to honour the compassion to pay, pay compassionate leave. I hope that makes sense. Sure. And is there a maximum per year of paid compassionate leave? You just There's not. No. So you'd be having a pretty bad year if you had that many immediate family members uh, pass on or get cr uh, critically ill, but there isn't actually a cap on compassionate leave again. Uh, the criteria is generally two days per uh, instance and again it um, is the criteria of the immediate family members or a member of the immediate household. Now we did have a question recently, uh, someone asked if the, a family member can be included as their pet and now whilst I understand there's a lot of individuals see dogs and other pet animals as part of their family, they're not actually considered as part of the family when it comes to paid compassionate leave. Uh, regarding annual leave, if, if an employee requests cashing out of annual leave but they do not have the minimum four weeks accrued, are employers obligated to refuse, to refuse them or is there flexibility when it is at the employee's request? There is no flexibility unfortunately with the cashing out of leave. So any uh, award um, or generally agreement uh, wouldn't pass a better off overall test for the um, against the award if a cashing out occurs with the leaving the employee with under the 20 days annual leave so no there's on foot there's no flexibility as far as that goes the employee must always have a minimum balance of that 20 days remaining okay how do you calculate the accrue annual leave on the last payday, it seems always have few minutes left once the hours are accrued, keyed in. I'm not sure if that makes sense. No, sorry, can you re repeat that one? How do you calculate the accrued annual leave on the last payday? It seems always have few minutes left once the hours of accrued keyed in. Right. We'll move on to the next question. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I think that yeah, probably be best if uh, whoever posed that question could put it in email form to advice at hradviceonline.com.au and we'll be able to cover that off in more detail for them. Sure. Um, for mm -hmm. compassionate leave, one of our employees needed to be in hospital for two months. Our company policy is only two days. The CEO is happy to pay him over two months after he ran out of annual leave and sick leave. Can I use compassionate leave to pay him the rest? So the, if I understand that question, that's an employee who actually fell ill and was hospitalised for a period of time and they're asking if the sick leave's been exhausted then compassionate leave applies. That wouldn't meet the criteria of compassionate leave as compassionate leave is for an employee who's not ill themselves generally but they're um, they're taking a couple of days for the death or serious illness of an immediate family member or immediate member of their household. If someone's sick themselves and it has exhausted their personal leave entitlements, they can go on unpaid leave or they can potentially look at applying for their annual leave payments if for financial reasons they need uh, some form of payment. Again, it would be up to the employer whether they honour that uh, application, but no, it, if I understood that question correctly, it wouldn't be deemed compassionate leave. Okay, sure. I've had a few queries around um, sick leave and when, once that's run out, can someone use annual leave instead of unpaid sick leave? Yeah. Again, uh, it's yeah, just what I stated then. A lot of a lot of the application approval process is dependent on an agreement between the employee and the employer. So it really in a lot of these situations, um, if the employee applies for annual leave and want to utilize it for the purpose whilst they're being whilst they're away ill, um, and that's what they choose to utilize it for, it, it really is up to the employer whether they want to accept um, and pay their current absence onto their annual leave, um, completely up to the employer to do so if they would like to do that. Um, however, they can, you can also, if someone is away sick and they exhaust their personal leave entitlements, put them onto unpaid sick leave. Sure. Um, what is the definition of immediate family member? Is this a grandparent or uncle, etc.? 
Yeah, gen well, generally immediate family member is, um, is taken as hus husband, wife or spouse, uh, son, daughter, uh, parent, uh, brother, sister. Uh, that's generally been uh, the criteria for it or immediate household member. So you might have uh, someone directly, you know, who's a cousin or so forth living in your house, but they're part of your household. They can be deemed under that particular criteria as well. Again, a lot of this stuff comes down to an agreement between uh, the employee and the employer. Uh, I know that, you know, there's many scenarios nowadays where you might be closer to a grandparent than you are your own parents and that sort of thing. So again, it can come down to an agreement between the employer and the employee as to whether they uh, deem it acceptable as compassionate leave, knowing the type of relationship that was held. Sure. Would you like to continue with more questions? Yeah, we'll continue on. Sure. If an employee is absent on annual leave and suffers an injury, breaks a leg, say, while skiing, mm -hmm. can they claim sick leave? <laughs> Uh, yes, they can, uh, generally if they meet the evidentiary requirements. So you would um, have them provide medical evidence um, as to the dates that they would have been unable to perform their duties. So a doctor medically uh, certifies them as unfit for that period of time. You can, uh, instead of utilising their annual leave entitlements, they can take it out of their personal sick leave, yes. When you say that the employee must have a minimum 20 days of annual leave accrued, does that mean that the employee is not entitled to take any leave until they accrue 20 days? In effect, they don't get any leave in the first year? No, no. So where we're talking about the minimum 20 days remaining, we're just talking about as the cash out. Okay, so an employee, an employee accrues, a full-time employee I should say, accrues 20 days per annum of leave. Now in order to have uh, it paid out in any form to be cashed out, first of all again it has to uh, state that it can be cashed out in the relevant award or agreement and the, it can only be a number of days above 20 that can be cashed out. Okay, so if an employee has 21, 22 or 30, they can only have the days that are above 20, so a balance of 20 days remaining, um, the balance can be paid out. Okay, when it comes to taking leave, leave accumulates throughout the year and should be, an employee should always be aware of uh, their leave entitlements. Generally, this is uh, stipulated on a payment slip uh, and that accumulation can be taken as it is accrued. Okay, we might just move on with the presentation now and take some further questions later if that's okay. Thanks. Okay, so the next slide as you can see is based on the community service leave. Okay, so who and how much? All employees including casual employees are entitled to unpaid community service leave. There is no limit to the amount of community service leave an employee can take, provided it meets the definition of an el eligible community service activity and that it is reasonable in all circumstances, except in the case of jury service leave or jury duty as we know it, which is always taken to be reasonable. Okay, An employee is entitled to be absent from their employment for a period if they are in are engaging in an eligible community service activity and when we say eligible we mean uh, state emergency service, country fire authority or jury duty. Employees are also entitled to leave for a reasonable travelling time associated with community service activity and reasonable rest and recovery time. So community service leave cannot be cashed out and does it accrue and is it payable on termination? It's not. It's a it's a, um, again an occasions based leave um, and it's not paid out on termination of, pay, of employment. Now how much does an, an employer pay? The only paid form of community service leave is for permanent employees who perform jury duty. Okay now where there is a provision to top up their pay for generally up to 10 days. So 
generally what happens with jury duty, if you've had an employee uh, be summoned for jury duty, they receive a letter detailing the dates that they're required for jury service and generally in that letter it advises how much payment they will actually receive if they're selected for jury service and um, usually there's a requirement to top up their pay to ensure that they're not at any loss for the term that they're on jury service uh, but it should all be documented and that's, um, sorry, it will all be documented. The court will always provide documentation for the employer in order to make payment available. So that again can be taken as the evidentiary requirement from the employee to be paid for um, the duration of jury service. Okay, and the next type of leave is parental leave. Now, who and how much? All employees other than casual employees are entitled to parental leave once they have completed at least 12 months of continuous service with the employer immediately prior to the expected date of birth of the child or in the case of adoption, the expected date of the placement of the child. The entire the entitlement for eligible employees is 12 months of unpaid parental leave with the ability in some circumstances to request a further 12 months. Now unpaid parental leave must start either on the birth of the child or up to six weeks prior to the expected birth and the employer and the employee can agree on the employee taking parental leave earlier than that. Employees who have already taken parental leave do not have to work another 12 months before taking another period of parental leave with the same employer. So say for example the uh, employee is on 12 months or even the extended uh, 12 month period after that, so 24 months of parental leave and fall pregnant again. They are not required to return to work and work a further 12 months before they're entitled to take up a new 12 month maternity leave. Generally parental leave is not paid unless your contract of, of employment or your policy states otherwise. Employees may be entitled to government funded paid leave entitlements, however government funded entitlements such as the Centrelink parental payments of the past and things like that are not considered paid leave and therefore any other leave entitlement such as annual leave uh, will not accumulate during a period of unpaid parental leave. So I'll say that again, if a person or an employee who's on unpaid parental leave receives Centrelink payments for parental leave, it is still taken as unpaid leave and therefore they will not accumulate annual leave during that time of absence. Other forms of paid leave, including annual leave or long service leave, can be taken during unpaid parental leave. However, the total period of absence won't exceed the 52 weeks of uh, parental leave. So I hope that makes sense. What it means is that if someone applies for 52 weeks of unpaid parental leave, they can apply for, their, say, their annual leave balance to be paid to them. So they might have 15 days accrued, they can apply for 15 days annual leave say at the start of their parental leave but that doesn't extend their 52 weeks by a further 15 days. Right. So we'll move on to long service leave and then after this we'll take some more questions if they come in. Who and how much? An employee gets long service leave after a long period of working for the same employer. Most employees' entitlements to long service leave comes from long service leave laws which differ, are different in each state or territory. The laws set out how long an employee has to be working in order to uh, become entitled to long service leave, how much long service leave the employee actually is entitled to, how much long service leave is paid out on termination of employment, and in some states and territories, long-serving casuals are eligible for long service leave also. So again, it's really important to understand your relevant award agreement or uh, employment contracts when, um, and the state relevant legislation as far as long service leave is concerned. It can be a very complex area and again, this is an area we regularly deal with our clients and help advise and assist with. 
So no long service leave can't be cashed out unless it's provided for in the applicable state legislation. Generally payment uh, for long service leave is at the employee's base rate of pay for their ordinary hours during their period of long service leave. Okay, any questions Charlotte? Yeah, there are a few questions. Mm -hmm. um, this might be going back to previously though. Um, sick leave sure. requests. Um, mm -hmm. Is elective surgery a grey area or not? Is this always sick leave or annual leave? Does it depend on the type of surgery? A surgery almost always requires some aftercare. Okay, uh, this is a this is a question we regularly receive actually. So, um, and it. it the way we sort of advise it, if someone goes for elective surgery, say there are pre-surgery appointments and so forth, um, you can request that that be taken as annual leave, okay? When they actually uh, undertake the surgery, however, and they're recovering from the surgery, they're then actually medically certified as unfit. So therefore, that then becomes an entitlement to take it under their sick leave entitlement. So I hope that makes sense. I think just on that, um, someone else mm -hmm. has asked if if an employee has a medical appointment arranged in advance, they're not actually sick at the time of the appointment, would this be paid yep. for sick leave or annual leave? So. Yep, so just as I stated then, yeah, if they're not actually sick on the day or re they're, met, they're deemed medically unfit, they're just taking the day's absence for an appointment, you can request that it be taken out of their annual leave entitlements. Absolutely, it doesn't need to come under sick leave just purely because it's a doctor's appointment. Um, does casual, do casual workers that work in Victoria receive long service leave? Okay, that's a really uh, complex area. It depends on the regularity and the length of service as far as their entitlement is concerned. Um, probably difficult to give a bit of an overview on that now, but if the person that posed that question wants to send through an email, we'll be able to take that offline. Um, can, I ch can I just check the period of top-up leave on jury duty? Was it the whole period or up to 10 days? Okay, generally it's 10 days, but it's dependent on um, the actual service requirements. So um, the generally the court um, relevant will provide uh, information as far as how much payment the employee will receive on jury service. Generally after 10 days, there may not be a top up required, but again, it's an individual type basis area um, and certainly something that we can assist any of our clients with at the time. I have a staff member of over 15 years service. He has exhausted his sick leave and annual leave. Can he use some long service leave as sick leave? Okay. A, a leave entitlement is uh, definitely something, again, it comes down to an application process and agreement between the employee and the employer as far as when they take it. Now, Generally, if an employee would like to apply for their long service leave to cover whatever period of absence they're having, if they choose to take it during a period of sickness, then again, um, it's their choice to put in that application and it's up to the employer whether they're wanting to honour that, um, that application of leave. Does I hope that makes sense. Yeah, no, not a problem. Sorry, mm -hmm. <laughs> just trying to read this. I have a casual employee yeah. who has worked for over nine years. She's taking unpaid maternity leave at the end of this month. Is she paid for long service leave over the nine years she has worked? Okay, so on a period, and we're about to, sorry, I did cover off the, um, the parental side of it. Any unpaid uh, period of leave doesn't actually accumulate long service leave or annual leave. So I don't know that I mentioned long service leave before either, but uh, an accrual of long service and annual leave doesn't actually occur during a period of unpaid parental leave. Okay. And generally to assist with that, if you go on to uh, sites such as the tax office and um, 
potentially the Fair Work uh, site, there's leave calculators and they specifically ask for any periods of unpaid parental leave because that impacts the calculation of accrual of long service leave. I think we sort of covered this earlier, but would it be classified as sick leave if the person had elective surgery, i.e. plastic surgery? Yes, you covered this earlier. Okay, so if they're recovering from any form of surgery, whether it's elective or not, they would be certified medically unfit and therefore they have an entitlement to sick leave or personal leave. However, any again, any periods of appointments leading up to that elective surgery, they're not deemed medically unfit at that time. Therefore, they are not necessarily entitled to their personal leave for those particular appointments. Does long service leave need to be taken on the minimum period of a month or is there a minimum amount of days to be taken at a time? Okay, that depends on the um, necessary legislation and so forth. Generally, again, long service leave uh, is a bit of an agreement basis between the employee and the employer. If that particular uh, person asking that question wants to send through an email with a little bit more detail, if they've got something more specific um, and advise, you know, which state they're actually calling from, we can um, respond to that in more detail for them. Is there a period of maternity and or parental leave that is paid? Only if an employer has a uh, internal policy or something like that that allows for paid maternity or paternity leave. Uh, but generally under uh, there's potential under certain awards or agreements that there's an allowance for that as well. But under the National Employment Standards, uh, if you just look at the general requirements there, it is 12 months unpaid leave with a potential to apply for a further 12 months of absence. You mentioned earlier that long service leave does not accrue during unpaid parental leave. Just checking, mm -hmm. does this extend to all other unpaid leave? Correct, and we're about to get onto that slide. Okay, that's all the questions for now, sure. so I'll let you carry on. Excellent. All right, so there is actually the next slide, which is also the final slide of the actual leave topics, is leave without pay or leave without payments. So what we're looking at here is unpaid carer's leave, unpaid sick leave and unpaid annual leave. Okay, so all employees, including casual employees, are entitled to two days unpaid carer's leave. Employees get two days unpaid carer's leave each time an immediate family member or household member of the employee needs care and support because of illness, injury or an unexpected emergency. Okay, so this two days unpaid carer's leave is in addition to the personal carer's leave entitlement that's paid earlier. Now, full-time and part-time employees can only get unpaid carer's leave if they don't have any of their, parent, their uh, personal paid sick or carer's leave left. Unpaid carer's leave can be taken in one continu continuous period, so two working days in a row, or in separate periods as agreed between the employee and the employer. So, for example, that could be four half days taken in a row. An employer can't take negative action against an employee for taking unpaid carer's leave. Okay, so again, it's really important uh, for any employer that if an employee needs to be away for any of the criteria, uh, so needing for themselves um, to care and support for an immediate family member for illness, injury or unexpected emergency, an employer can't take negative action against an employee for needing to do so. Where an employee has run out of paid sick leave, they can take unpaid leave if they aren't fit for work because they are sick or injured. Okay, so it's what I was stating before. If an employee exhausts their paid sick leave, and they continue to be sick or they, had, they have a new instance of illness, they can take unpaid sick leave for their absence. So if the employee though is on unpaid sick leave, um, you as a business owner may want to move them on um, because it's been a longer period of absence. 
uh, generally there is a, a process to follow and it's where you're uncertain of when the employee can return to fulfil the inherent requirements of their role. Now, it's been tested in the fair work space recently that uh, a period of three months or less is deemed generally to be unreasonable to try and terminate someone's employment for being absent for medical reasons. However, if an employee has been absent due to illness, for a period of three months or more and at that time you don't have a general understanding or any date provided as to when they can return to perform the inherent requirements of the position they were employed for, you can start a termination process with them. Now this is something that we regularly assist our clients with and um, it's, it's a very complex area and we always uh, suggest and recommend that you seek advice if you need to go down that path. Now unpaid annual leave, again when an employee is run out of paid leave or doesn't have enough entitlement to cover the period they wish to take leave for, they can be approved for unpaid leave for a period of their absence. So again, throughout these sort of absences, the unpaid absences, no accrual of annual leave or long service leave will occur. So that's unpaid carer's leave, unpaid sick leave, unpaid annual leave and unpaid parental leave and accrual for other leave stops. Okay. The next slide is all about HR Advice Online. Now, if you were to subscribe with HR Advice Online, we provide templates, forms, checklists and policies. Uh, we provide access to our advisory team, which I'm one of, um, for specific advice. And we provide updates on uh, changes to what you need to do in your business. So it might be legislative changes, uh, award changes, that sort of thing will require uh, we will provide updates to our clients on that. Uh, subscriptions are payable by the month um, and our subscriptions are on an annual basis. This year uh, we're happy to announce that uh, we're hosting some breakfast sessions in um, participation with uh, Reckon, uh, with Reckon Training. Um, our director Cheryl and Kerry uh, will be uh, presenting at those particular sessions and the discussions, the topics that will be uh, discussed on those sessions will be the summary of the Fair Work Commission's annual wage case and its impact on both award and non-award employees, how the national wage case's wage increase affects the minimum wage and award rates of pay, the BOOSH or the better off overall test and how to apply it, and the changing landscape of the industrial relations and how to maintain compliance with the Fair Work Act. So these are the locations on this particular slide, the locations and times of those particular breakfast sessions and we'd love to see uh, you all on board to um, these really informative sessions. Uh, more details can be uh, found on the link there which is at the uh, Reckon Training website and that's also I believe where registration may occur for those particular sessions. So as I stated throughout uh, the session as well, any further questions that you might have or if I didn't quite understand your question at the time um, and you need a bit more detail around the particular question that you posted, uh, this is our contact information. So our email is advice at hradviceonline.com.au and that's our website address there if you want to find out a little bit more information about HR Advice Online. Now, Charlotte, were there any further questions that have come through in the meantime? Yes, uh, thanks so much, Claire. We do have a few questions coming through. Sure. Um, I think you mentioned earlier a calculator of leave. Is there a calculator or a template to work out long service leave? Yes, yeah, so um, there are some online tools um, in, in various websites as far as uh, assisting to calculate with your long service leave and so forth. Um, but again, we can, uh, we, 
quite often provide specific guidance uh, to our clients as far as what they need to look for uh, when calculating their long service leave and so forth, because obviously the legislation varies uh, from state to state. So again, this is something we can assist with. Sure. Um, can someone only take unpaid carer's leave if they have no personal leave entitlements left or can they take Correct. it if they don't want to use their personal leave entitlements? No, so the unpaid carer's leave entitlement is only after their personal leave or carer's leave entitlements have been exhausted. They then have uh, the entitlement of two days unpaid carer's leave. Sorry, you saw that, Claire. I think I muted you. You did. Yeah. <laughs> you can uh, hear me? Yes. And yep. Is there <laughs> any limit for unpaid carers' leave? What if someone keeps taking unpaid carers' leave and/or sick leave without providing medical certificate, but happy to be unpaid? Yeah, so you could then uh, look to a performance management. So to understand that question, it's someone who's taking it quite regularly, but they're not providing the evidentiary uh, requirements uh, of the absence. You can first of all, you know, request obviously for evidence to be provided on each occasion there at making an application for carer's leave. If it then starts to become an issue, you can look to go down a performance management path, which again is something we assist our clients with on a regular basis. Sure. I've had a few queries around if um, an employee has has annual leave accrued but they don't want to take it, they would rather take unpaid leave. Is this possible? Okay. Again, um, generally an unpaid leave comes becomes applicable when they have exhausted their entitlements. Now, for an employer, you would uh, understand that an annual leave entitlement sits on the bottom line in the financials and is quite a hefty bill to sit there. Uh, you would generally like uh, an employee to exhaust their annual leave entitlement prior to allowing them to take unpaid leave. Again, though, a leave application is on an agreement basis, so when if you if an employee uh, put, can always put in an application for an unpaid leave, uh, we would always recommend you uh, you talk to them about utilising their leave entitlement for that absence. However, again, it is up to you as the employer whether you allow that unpaid leave to be taken. Okay, sure. I am required to approve unpaid annual leave for an employee who, sorry, am I required to approve unpaid, unpaid annual leave for an employee who often does not have enough annual leave available? Uh, the only requirement to approve leave is when it makes sense for the organisation. So if someone's already exhausted their leave entitlements for the year but continually wants to take unpaid leave and have um, absences, uh, then it's up to the employer to decide whether it's becoming more of a detriment for the business and does it fall then into performance management uh, because of the amount of absence from work. However, when an employee has exhausted their annual leave entitlement, uh, that can be uh, one of the conditions uh, considered for declining uh, an annual leave request. However, it would need to be considered on an individual basis and it would be need to be considered with the requirements of the business at the time. Sure. If you can't contact an employee or their relatives and friends who have gone on leave for longer than was approved, how long until you can start to consider termination? Yeah, okay, that's um, quite a complex area as well. There's, um, I can't tell you a set time right now uh, because it would depend on uh, an individual basis, the length of service, all the considerations we would normally take when you're looking into termination, but there is due process as far as uh, the requirements to uh, make contact with a staff member and the evidentiary requirements to show that you've made attempts uh, and then take it down the termination path that way. Again, this is a very complex area, but something we are frequently assisting our clients with. Is it correct that a collective agreement overrides any old awards for long service leave entitlements? 
Okay, an agreement, uh, if it's in place, has been approved by the Fair Work Commission and therefore has passed the better off overall test. So your agreement will override um, other uh, areas of legislation because it has been passed um, and it is uh, applicable for the term of the agreement. Okay, that's great. That's the end of the questions that have been submitted for now. As Claire mentioned okay, earlier, um, we would love to see you all at the breakfast events we're holding across the country. Uh, check out our website for more details and for registration. But it'd be it'd be really great to see everyone there. Thanks. Okay, thanks, thanks, Charlotte, and thanks everyone for joining today. Um, I hope you uh, benefit from the information that uh, you've received. If you do have any further questions, feel free to shoot an email through with your queries. Uh, Charlotte and Reckon will be forwarding those to us um, and we can give you some uh, general responses to those particular questions. Again, if you want to know a little bit more about HR Advice Online, please go to our website or again, email us directly. But thanks again for attending today. Thanks, Charlotte. Thanks, Claire. Thanks so much for your presentation and thanks everyone for participating. A recording of this session will be available on our Reckon Training Academy. Thanks again and hope you all have a good day.